Hey friends, today on Gardening with Creekside, we are going to give some love to the Rose Garden here at the nursery. Last year, we installed this gorgeous flower bed behind us full of proven winter roses. A lot of those roses are brand new to the market. And here it is in North Carolina, a zone 7B, late January, and it is time for me to prune them. How do I know it's time for me to prune them? Well, they are already starting to set out some fresh new leaves just I can see the hint of them popping out so that is a big indicator that I need to get out here and spend some time in the rose garden today I'm going to bring you along for the journey and show you how to prune your roses I know we have done other rose prunings in the past these are going to be specifically looking at the Proven Winter roses. We have the Rise Up series from Proven Winters, which is like a mini climber. It's really fun. There are three colors in that one. So you can either train it however you want. If you want to have it, you know, climbing and, and trailing and going up, you can do that or you can keep it as a shrub rose. Then we have the Reminiscent series, which is a beautiful shrub rose, three colors in that. And then we have some various other smaller landscape roses that are a little bit more low and wide bring lots of color to your garden so i want to share with you exactly how to prune these roses because i've been getting a lot of questions from both our customers and our viewers on you know what do i do with my proven winners roses so today we're going to show you exactly what to do two tools that i would highly recommend that you have first of all if you've seen me here lately with my roses, you know that I have recently purchased a set of rose gauntlet gloves. These are going to be an absolute lifesaver for you if you are dealing with roses. These are a very nice, soft leather. It is leather all the way up. This will really protect not only your hands, but your arms and also even your clothing from those rose thorns. I got these from Gardener Supply. Uh, I have average hands. It's size ladies medium there you go so head on over to gardener supply and get these i'm telling you it is worth the investment they're like around 40 dollars they will last forever they are nice and soft they're not stiff whatsoever so you can easily maneuver your hands in there and you don't have to worry about slicing up your fingers so I've got my gloves and then I have got my trusty, trusty Felco pruners. These are of course in my little pouch that I take everywhere with me. These are a size two, really good clippers, pruners, are an absolute must if you are a gardener. Uh, we are relatively uh, loving, not relatively loving, we are absolutely loving these Felcos. And um, as long as you take care of them, they will last you for forever. So I have an average size hand. Uh, I, like I said, I wear a size medium and a two fits me really nicely. I had somebody ask me about that as well. So if you're interested in Felcos, we have a coupon code for you, 10% off. So you can check out our video description and that is in there. So these two tools are really all that you need i do have a little bucket to put my debris in and because we got lots of rain in the past couple of days we are in the south it's all it does is rain in the south in the winter time i do have my knee pad so that way i can be down low on the garden and not have soaking wet pants so without further ado we are going to start up with rise up amberness okay so we're standing here with the rise up amberness uh, Proven Winners was in our friends over at Spring Meadow Nursery, the Proven Winner Color Choice, home of all of those fantastic shrubs. They were very sweet and sent me a bunch of these roses earlier in almost a year ago now. And so I have three of each one. Rise Up Amberness is an absolutely stunning flower. It is the most gorgeous bloom. It has an amber flower um, nice and rich beautiful double but these rise up series like i said earlier you can have them to be trained like in this obelisk if you want it to have go up and they'll get to be about three to five feet tall or you can have them as a shrub rose so i have the three different rise up series all the way down through the bed and each one is an obelisk and then there are two of that same rose just freestanding in front of it we are going to attack this rise up amberness first here because you can really see this is all of this year's growth nice and vigorous nice this is probably 
I don't know, maybe close to four feet tall. I'm five foot, so this is a little less, obviously less than that. And then we have some growth down here at the bottom that's smaller and thinner. So I wanna show you what we're gonna do. As a general rule, we are going to stick with that same general rule as with all other roses. We are going to prune it back by at least one third of its total size. You can do more if necessary. So if we look at this plant and we say, okay, well half would be about here. So a third is about right here. And that is what I'm going to do, especially since this is a young plant and I wanna get some really nice, thick, strong canes that will then take me on through. So we are going to take our Felcos and if you can, it is optimal to go ahead and prune it right above where you see some really nice, strong, healthy um, leaf swells. And I'm, I got a lemon zest behind me, so hopefully lemon zest will poke me in the honey. Um, so coming down here and I can see a nice, a nice leaf swell right here and always if in doubt you can always go up high first because you can always prune more of your rose off but once your rose is cut obviously you can't put it back on so when in doubt be a little bit more generous on your length and then you can come back and, and take it out so you can see i've taken that nice long cane nice and thick and sturdy so now I'm gonna focus on some of the smaller things. If you still wanna look for any of diseased, damaged, or dead stems, canes in here, those automatically come out. Then when you have some that are like crisscrossing, you wanna go ahead and get those out as well because you don't want it to be rubbing on the plant. So I'm just coming in here really and just, if I see something that like is broken, like this one right here, even though it has green growth on it, it was broken down at the bottom like it was bent. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. And we're just gonna come in here and just prune. That's one of the most important things you can absolutely do for your roses is to prune them. I had some old foliage that has gotten burnt, so I'm gonna take that off as well. It will flush out and we will be good to go for sure. So you just come in here and once you kind of get your groove, once you kind of get your rhythm going, it's pretty easy. You just have fun and come in and clip for sure. But it's really fun because this Rise Up series, it was developed in Serbia from, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, an all-female breeding um, team. And so they really tried to find roses and to breed roses that would have beautiful fragrance because if you're gonna have a rose, you gotta have some fragrance, right? In my opinion, I mean, it's like, what's the point? It's gotta have a beautiful, delicious fragrance. They needed them to be a little bit more, try to be more disease resistant, which as a Southern gardener who deals with black spot, that was very, <laughs> that was a very welcome sign for sure um, to have that. So these are more disease resistant. Of course, your roses do love the full sun conditions. So you need at least a minimum of six hours. Now, you can see this cane during the growing season had gotten a little toppled over. So we have tons of old growth up here, but it's going, it's slanted more down. Brenna is smelling the roses. This dog does enjoy some roses, even as a pup last year. So I'm gonna cut back just a little bit more because I don't want my canes laying down. I need them more upright. Down, down in here, I have a lot of like weak growth. Last year, I planted um, in this flower bed with these roses, um, the Gumfrina, the Truffula Pink, and then the, oh gosh, the new Rockin's uh, Salvia, the Deep Purple, and it was gorgeous in here. I really overplanted and I underestimated how much these roses were gonna grow this year. So some of my roses actually suffered a little bit because I put too many plants in here with the annuals and they didn't get the, the sunlight and the air circulation that they needed. I think that could be going on what's happening here because I've got this one stem and there's just a bunch of really thin spindly limbs coming off of it. And so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take that one pretty much all the way back because it's just, there's not one strong main cane. And so um, I want to have as many strong canes as I possibly can 
So there, see, it was just kind of a, it was just a bit of a jumbled mess of a bunch of little small little guys. So we're gonna take that out. Um, because you want your roses to have really good open air circulation. So that way they can breathe and that really does help prevent, even though these are disease resistant, we are in the South and we have lots of heat and humidity. We wanna open them up and give them lots of good air circulation so that we don't get any kind of fungus like black spot. So as easy as that, this first one is done. You're gonna take those roses, these rise up roses, back by one third. So I've got two more of these amberness to do, and then we're gonna move on down and then get the rest of the rise up series done. And then I'm gonna show you how to attack the reminiscent series. Doing this is gonna give you gorgeous flowers this coming season. I've got all of my rise ups have been pruned and what I am sitting here in the middle of is the reminiscent pink. Reminiscent series is that classic shrub rose that we just think of, right? That icon when you think of a rose, iconic in your brain, that is what this reminiscent series is. There are three colors. I am with the reminiscent pink, which is a nice deep um, burgundy, almost kind of a blackish stems on it. Then we have reminiscent crema which is a beautiful it's not quite a white and it's not quite a yellow it's almost like a buttermilk color gorgeous one of my favorite ones and then there is reminiscent coral which just is that you know classic uh coral color very beautiful double flowers on them and have a great fragrance these are really those shrub roses. You can see that they have kind of that open upright habit. They are not really falling over. Now you may notice you're like, well, Jenny, they've already been pruned. At the end of the summer, I do, I did have to do a little bit of pruning on them just to, um, because of the other annuals that were in here. And so I had to do just a little bit of pruning. So, but it was not my final pruning. That is what I am doing now. Again, we are gonna go for right where our leaf buds are beginning to swell. So when we see that leaf bud, we're gonna come in and we are going to clip. Whenever you prune a shrub, right, you are encouraging new growth and roses bloom on new growth. That is why it is so essential to come in here and prune these because not only do we want to shape them but we want to encourage that new growth which will give us lots and lots of gorgeous flowers throughout the growing season now beautiful thing about the reminiscence is that you do not have to deadhead these you do not have to come out in the garden and deadhead them i naturally deadhead them simply because i come out here and clip the gorgeous flowers so when you're clipping the flowers you are actually pruning your shrub and that is just a natural way to prune which i even probably you don't even think about it so this one was pretty easy. It's not, some roses are a little, they lend themselves easier to being pruned than others. These three, they already have a really nice, beautiful, open, upright habit. So it's making it really easy to prune them. There is not much guesswork. I'm like, should I cut here or should I cut there? I am just coming in and pruning uh, and they are gonna be gorgeous. So I'm gonna finish up these two reminiscent pink i'm going to hit my other reminiscence and then we're going to go on i've got some oh so easy so that i want to share with you how easy those are to do as well the last rows that we are going to work on printing today are the oh so easies so in front of me i have oh so easy urban legend and urban legend has a gorgeous red flower on it if you are looking for a nice hot color in your garden to really stand out then the oh so easy urban legend is a great one for you i chose to do the urban legend because it is perhaps the most vigorous of the oh so easies you can clearly see it is a very happy plant with lots and lots of uh, opportunities to be pruned on it for sure one thing that we as a grower have noticed with oh so uh, the urban legend rather is if you get some really big cane that comes out of that then you really need to get in there and cut it back that cane as far as you can back down to the rootstock 
This is where these Rose Gauntlet gloves comes in quite handy because Urban Legend is uh, quite prolific with the thorns for sure. But we're coming in here because this has more of a wider than tall habit on it. Whereas the rise ups, obviously being a mini climber are nice and tall and the reminiscence are nice shrub roses. Your osos are going to be more wider than tall. I'm basically going to take the whole plant by at least a third, if not a half, because again, urban legend is a very vigorous, um, happy, prolific grower, and it can handle you pruning it back. If you want to have your beautiful, you know, flowers throughout the growing season, then this really is a necessary to task is to come in here and prune it back. You're just looking again, well, there's a stem from the tree. I thought, oh, well, there's dead, but it's not dead. It's just a stem. And just get in here right above those leaf buds and, and trim it back. It's not, once you understand how to prune basically one rose, then you can just about do any of the roses. So you can see where this one is kind of crossing and is coming all the way back across the plant. I don't want that because it actually originates right here and it's crossing back. So I'm going to come and cut that one all the way back to its original cane. You want the, the roses to come out, not be crisscrossing one another. So you're just going to come in here and really shape it up. But these little leaf bud swells, are all over this plant. It is not going to be long at all before we are going to have some beautiful foliage on these plants. So I'm going to keep coming in here because like I said, this sweet thing, I mean this in the kindest and most loving way possible, it's a beast. So we want to get in here and really be quite aggressive with the pruning. All right, my friends. So all the roses have been pruned. They are ready for warmer temperatures to arrive so that they can happily start growing and hurry up and produce us some gorgeous flowers. Now, what kind of maintenance do I do on these roses for the rest of the season? The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to use my Espoma Rose Tone and I am going to apply this, this slow release fertilizer around the base of each of these roses. For me on the calendar, it will more than likely be probably late February. I wanna do that really when the growth is really starting to happen and I know it really should be happening as far as like I'm getting more consistent warmer temperatures. In the south, our temperatures fluctuate all over the place. We can be 75 one day, and then two days later, it can be 23 degrees in the morning. So I'm waiting on those warmer temperatures to use my rose tone. This is a fantastic, nice, organic, slow-release fertilizer to use on your roses. You simply want to pull back your mulch, apply the amount that it tells you to on the bag, you just kind of rake it in just a little bit in the soil, and then put your mulch back. It is as easy as that. Just simply follow the directions on the bag, nice and easy peasy. Now, in the south, we do deal with some lovely critters for our, our roses. We have a horrible problem with Japanese beetles. Before that, we even early in the spring, we have um, this fantastic little caterpillar that is a little teeny tiny caterpillar that will get on the back of the leaves and just chew a lot of holes in the leaves. A friend of mine recommended this for me. Um, this is what I use. It is the Bio Advanced. It is the all-in-one. So it's a three-in-one. One, it is that um, it is a fertilizer. So you can use that if you want to throughout the growing season, or you can just use your rose tone if you don't have the issues that, like, that I have with the bugs. It is also, it will take care of that caterpillar and it will prevent your uh, Japanese beetles from coming and absolutely decimating your roses. If you do not have Japanese beetles in your garden, then consider, consider yourself extremely lucky because Japanese Japanese beetles will completely defoliate a rose in just a simply a matter of days. They just can completely cover the plant. It is the grossest thing ever. This is a great way to help prevent that. Also, it is a fungicide. 
the vast majority of these roses have a good disease resistance built into them but again i am in north carolina my nights do not cool down i have thick thick air all the time in the summertime and that is like the perfect breeding ground for black spot so by using this that helps give me one more layer of protection against black spot it is a granular so you again you can follow the directions on the container it does also come in a liquid if you wanted to spray i actually just prefer to use the granular roses do like to have good consistent irrigation um, and water source so if you have your roses in the full sun like they should be and you don't have good consistent water on them you might want to consider that especially if you are having some issues with your flowers these here at the nursery are not on irrigation and that is because this area is kind of in a low lying area so when we get rain it really does retain the moisture quite nicely we amended this soil really well with lots of organic material uh, when we put this bed in and then of course when needed we will come and hand water these roses but just know this fl this flower bed is not on irrigation so it is either what the good lord gives us or it is what we hand water with them i'm really excited about this growing season i have learned with shrubs the first year they do pretty good right the second year is when they really start to take off and then the third year is when they really start to become all in their glory and just show you what they are all about so this year i suspect we are going to have some gorgeous flowers that we get to share with you in the growing season. So as always, thank you so much for joining with Creekside. Y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.